somehow by abstracting the photographs into a pattern of ones and zeros, that's regarded as preserving them. This is what Google's doing. They're going around digitizing everything they can get their hands on. Uh, libraries, um, all sorts of documents, both uh, both written documents and visual documents and who knows what else. They're digitizing everything. They're turning everything into ones and zeros. Uh, and this is a way of preserving things. They're preserving things by abstracting them. Are ones and zeros real? I say ones and zeros, but uh, what we're just talking about is holes or, or magnetic, magnetic patterns. That's the reality that we're we're living in. So, what's real? I've talked about dreams, I've talked about daydreams, I've talked about how we get caught up in digital patterns and how uh, much of our life is now engaging with digital patterns on computer screens, on televisions. And yet we might have a problem with this notion of astral projection. Well, there's another phenomenon which is perhaps more common and which does have some scientific credence, and that's the phenomenon of lucid dreaming. And this is when you're aware that you're dreaming and you can take some kind of control over the dream. It's a very vivid experience. And um, when you know you're dreaming, you can fly, for example. You might still be a little bit wary about it because the dream might feel very real. <coughs> and uh, flying, you might not feel very confident about flying. But, you know, once you know it's a dream and you've got that conviction, then it's possible to fly and do anything you like, basically. It's quite, quite an intoxicating experience. So within that, there's another aspect to the lucid dreaming, is, though, is the sense of reality. There's a sense of reality. And uh, in a way it even seems more real than when you're awake. And that's an interesting one, isn't it? That sense of who you are in a lucid dream is, is very vivid and very vital. So I think, I think if you want to get technical about it, some people would argue there's, there's distinctions between astral projection or and lucid dreaming and out of the body experiences. Uh, I, I don't want to go into all that, but I, th I think once we acknowledge the amount of time that we can spend lost in dreams, daydreams and abstract images, and, and, and if we can acknowledge lucid dreams, if you've had one then this will be easier for you to swallow. If you haven't then you can do some research on it. Um, it's perfectly feasible to imagine then that uh, you could be having an out-of-body experience. As I say, I don't think the out-of-body experience is, is not a scientific fact. I'm not arguing for that. But certainly the experience feels like that. And... Um, and perhaps the, you are out of your body if you're having an out-of-body experience. But the, the, you're, where, where you are, you're not out of your body. You haven't come into this common reality. You've gone into some reflection of this reality, perhaps. In the Yoga Vasishta, there's there are countless realities, countless universes. Um, what we now describe as parallel universes, perhaps. And I think we slip into these parallel universes all the time in dreams, in, 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 in daydreams, uh, perhaps when you pass out, when you faint, and uh, in lucid dreams and in out-of-body experiences, 
and uh, and did astral projection. And uh, I, I think it's important to embrace these as, as phenomena, not necessarily scientifically viable phenomena. We're not scientific beings. Science applies to a certain aspect of our lives. But our lives are not scientific. We live according to our emotions, our feelings, our intuitions, our, our needs, our, our, our emotional needs as well. It's, it's only our physical needs which perhaps has got some kind of scientific context. But we live according to our imagination. What's art about after all? Do we need art? Is art real? Is art scientific? So let's not think of ourselves, maybe we shouldn't think of ourselves so much as scientific and rational but as artistic, as imaginative, that's who we are as human beings. And um, it's great that we've got science, but let's not try and pretend that, we've, that we're scientific beings. We're not scientific beings. We're imaginative beings. We're, we're artistic, we're creative. Reality is not scientific. Reality is spiritual. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Um, I, I think spirituality infuses science. They're just different modes that we can we can operate in. So let's feel free to shift from one mode to another. And be careful about which mode we apply and when. This, this is the message of the Yoga Vasishta. It seems it's saying that the world of the senses, what we what we regard as the world of the senses, and all the notions we've built up <coughs> about this world of the senses, that it's something existing out there, and I am, I am here, walking around in that world out there. All these are just notions, and it's saying let's get back to our reality. which is deeper than that and it's more fundamental than that and by bringing in the ethereal journeys of Leela and Sarasvati it's changing our point of reference it's taking us to the imagination it's speaking to us as creative artistic beings and not as this scientific fabrication which most of us uh, like to subscribe to but in practice we're not scientific it's just a, a pseudo rationality that most of us subscribe to not not real rationality if we were truly ration, rational then we would be acknowledging our imagination our emotions and our spiritual nature more and the spiritual nature of things more often. <laughs>